Hey everybody, welcome back to a new Elder Scrolls Legends video. Over the weekend I had a bit time to grind, so I was trying a ward midrange sorcerer deck that was working decently for myself and because some of you already asked me about the list, this deck is the subject of today's video. For additional resources or deck ideas on this archetype, I can also recommend the list that PDMD was running late in the top 30, you can find that at legendsdecks.com. The ward midrange sorcerer build is in its core around since the game started. Instead of drastically changing with new cards that were released over time, the deck slowly evolved, only changing a small amount of cards in total. Partially due to the fact that there were not many great new ward units introduced with the latest expansions, the basic cards that are seeing play in this deck are still mostly the same as they used to be. That does not mean that there are not some nice new tools and tricks in it, but on the other hand you could also play some pre-heroes of Skyrim decklist and still find success with that on the ladder. As a midrange deck you're trying to out-tempo your opponent playing minions on curve, head to the face, playing royal sage for some nice keywords, while also staying ahead until you can play supreme ultimancer on turn 9 and hopefully win the game at that point. Of course the deck name already suggests it, so yeah a majority of units in this deck will be kind of silent to damage because of the ward keyword. This will help you to trade greatly against non-ward units, but keep in mind that the amount of ward hate has increased greatly with the new expansion. Curse cards that are widely used nowadays are a huge problem for the deck. Also new spells like the Sorcerer's Negation will just instantly kill your valuable targets like the deck of all mage. The increased use of curse packages in combination with the new Shearpoint Dragon card is for example the reason why Ram Scout is in a very good spot most of the time against the Ward Sorcerer. Furthermore you might run into trouble against ugly aggro decks. The deck does not run any healing too few properties and also a low amount of guards so potentially you will just get overrun badly. Nonetheless it has a good spot in the meta and even in the bad matchups you are not too far behind. As usual we are now playing two games with the deck so stay tuned and enjoy. If you like the content that I am producing don't forget to hit the like button or check out my twitch stream as well. Thank you very much and now on to some gameplay. Here we go starting with the first game it will be Sorcerer vs Sorcerer. So you can expect to see a similar build to mine build here. So most likely it is a midrange source, but there are rarely any greedy ram sorcerers on the ladder and um, nothing otherwise that is more aggressive than the midrange sorcerer. So we're gonna start here with a wardcrafter with a harpy and then we have a little gap which should still be filled. Uh, it depends a bit on how we're standing with the windkeep spell part. So then we are going for the wardcrafter ourselves. Sorcerer's negotiation would have been very nice now this situation but we need to go for the Warcraft of course. We draw a Supreme Artemis from the top which is for sure right now not the card we like to see because it is too expensive because we have nothing right now to really play on turn 4 besides Lightning Bolt which might be safe for later. And oh what's that? Still for Dark Rift. Oh okay. So after the Dark Rift was used 5 times he's getting a Storm Artemis on the board with 7 5 with a Ward. So pretty strong card. Let's just hit the wind keep here and use the harpy to shackle it so we cannot attack with that unit. Pushing another one point here in the face. Then there's the East Empire Crafter. So we definitely need to kill the East Empire Crafter. Source of negation. A little bit too late. So lightning bolt is definitely used here. And we are using the harpy to kill the wind keep because I'm waiting for two in the face. On the next turn, we are going then for the Shadow and Priest to take care of a Dark Rift. Turn 6 will be the High King Emmerich. And we're also getting an additional card here, which is the Corrupt Shade. Cannot really use that if we are interested in getting rid of the Dark Rift right now. Also, we have one more turn time. But on the other hand, we then are forced to play the Shadow and Priest on the next turn. So right now, I would say it is better to just go into the Shadow of Priest directly. For the next turn, as you can see here, turn 6. Hiking Emmerich is interested to see some play, so if we are waiting with the Shadow Film, then we can only play the Hiking Emmerich one turn later, and so on and so on. I Just cutting it loose. Oh, uh, Night Shadow. Hmm. Are we giving him. Oh man. I guess we will give him the extra drain here. Mother of mine. He will still push more damage into Your his face, so he's down to spin. 20. He's then draining back to 26. We are going for the Wind Keep spell and we're going for the Corrupted Shade here in this situation. Because right now, 
We can then just play the High King Emrigon the next turn and dealing 6 damage with that, killing the Night Shadow. If he's getting rid of one of the wards here, we will just go for the Source of Negotiation. And then also play the Shorn of Champion most likely. And the Guardian doesn't matter too much as long as the wards are staying on the board. The Guardian as well. Resourceful is that is, oh, what is that? When you play an action or support card, Crack Long Scavenger gains plus one, plus one. That's a very, very interesting build that he's using here. Anyway, definitely High King Emmerich is coming, killing the Night Shadow. Then it would mean that we could trade the Dark Guardian, but we would lose then the Corrupted Shade because of the effect that at the end of your turn, if Corrupted Shade doesn't have a ward, you will sacrifice him. So that could be a problem. I mean, we don't have to attack the Dark Guardian, of course. It's just a two-point unit. Uh, but I kind of like that. What else could we do here on the other hand? Hmm. Yeah, it's still the best. So we're going for the Hiking Emmerich. But here on the I left side. We're killing the Night Shadow. And I would also say we're killing the Guardian here and pushing the... Oh, please go. And we're pushing the damage in his face. So we're losing the Corrupted Chaitin at the end of our turn. Your blood will He's going down to 18. Yep, uh, still a strong board, even if you're losing the Corrupted Shade. He just has a 1-2 here on the board, and that's a very strange card. You're not seeing that too often in any deck, so there should be more support cards incoming besides uh, Dark Rift. So he's not only playing control. Dark Rift here, and then with that he's playing the Scavenger. That doesn't make too much sense, because the Scavenger is costing 3. He's a 1-2, and he needs at least 2 effects from support cards to get more than a normal three magicka unit. Return is really not a problem, we will just use the Sorcerer's Negotiation. So that will be huge for him. Also he's dropping a Bardet guy. here, another interesting card. Oh man, I'm not really sure what the plan is. I'm definitely interested in dropping a Dark Guardian. And with that, if, if he's getting now um, a Prophecy there, we're just drawing an additional card, which Let is... Take out so let's just push some damage done. in, and he's instantly conceding, so not even forced to do that, but we would have won anyway. Okay, guys, so our second game will be against Battle Mage, and guess what? That will be most likely just an aggressive deck, very aggressive deck, with a lot of Prophecies in there. So, pretty fun deck. No, it is not, it is just... An aggressive sucker deck most likely. And that is not fun to play at all. So we will see about that. Yep, it is an aggressive sucker deck. Well done. Um, so we will just drop the dagger for mage here. You could also play for example fireball to kill that instantly. You could play source negativation, kill it instantly. But for now I would say it is more useful to have a unit on the board. Take down the Alert, we're getting a Tome of Alteration, and we can still kill the unit here, whatever he's dropping. Thing is, a Royal Sage, for example, is not giving us too much value in this matchup, because, of course, he is normally the one that is staying at. That's a Shield Breaker, so he's pushing us down to 23. And now, what we are doing is we are going for the Source's Negotiation. The problem is, that one is currently bugged, so it might be that this unit is staying on the board besides getting silence and then getting the two damage. So it could be that he is staying on the board here. That was uh, the case for me when I faced the Windkeep Spellthought lately. Also, this one had ward, so then the ward was going off and he still had the life on it. We will see about that. So going for the Source of Negotiation. It is... Oh, it was working great. So let's just push two in the face here. We are going for a Windkeep Spellthought as well. This day will be mine. That might give us a chance to go ahead on the next turn and then play the Royal Sage and hope to get something like Drain or Guardsy on the board. Like okay, you. with the Camelon here we cannot do that, unfortunately. Cannot do that, Shornal Champion. Uh, so kind of interested in playing a Fireball here. See, he's not getting anything, which is pretty, pretty excellent. We'll then go for the Fireball. And we're also dropping a Wardcrafter here on the left side. So right now we are only behind by one life point. So there is still a decent chance that we can play the Royal Sage on the next turn. I have no fear of you, cowardly Okay, it's a Raider. I have no fear of you. There's another one. Oh, great success, man. Great success. And he's hitting us for two. Yeah, right. Really cool story. So there is a Hiking Emmerich, which is right now, as you can see here, we have three wards on the board so the high king emmerich what he is doing is dealing six or even eight damage in his face because the high king had also ward so potentially we have right now 
8 damage plus an additional 6, so he would be going down to... How much is that? And that is... Um, that's 14 damage. 14 damage, he would be going down to 8. We are staying at 17, yeah. Also, the double riders are really dangerous, so... Not a huge fan of that. I mean, he should not be able to kill us here, right? We could just try and go for the face and see how many prophecies he's getting. If he's getting too dangerous, we can still kill the units. Uh, yeah, let's go for that. So, no reaction. No reaction. Down to 16. We will then go for the Hiking Emmerich. Push an additional 8 into his face. So we're breaking another 2 runes. And he's not getting anything. Which is amazing. So, at 8, we just need a Lightning Bolt here for 4. And we just need then 2 units that can hit him in the face. Or we need just the Hiking Emmerich. The Raiders here are cool, so they are pushing 4, they are dealing additional 2, and then dealing another additional 2, so that is 8 right now. Plus whatever he has in his hand, that can push more. But if he's, for example, using the Battle Mace, that's an additional 4 that he can push, so he has a total of 8 on the board. And he's also dealing a bit more, so it's not able to kill us. Still have enough then. So, down to 11. What can you do? Most like the... Nothing, and we are winning the game here. Yeah? That's a lightning bolt, which is pushing us down to uh, three here. Yeah? But he still needs three, so. Okay, and there's the Alit, which is pushing us down to one, and he's staying at six. Which, on the other hand, means that we are just winning the game. We will take care of these raiders first, I would say. Just in case. And we're getting the Tomb of Alteration, and with that we are pushing the Hiking Emery, and that's a 7-7. Seven, seven. So you could have just go with all the units into his face, but that is definitely more risky than just getting the 7-7 seven, seven here. 